Hi, on today's show, Truth Project, I'm going to talk about what are the false teachers actually teaching? How do you recognize when a teaching comes that's false? Well, I used to be a false teacher, so I know all the ways, so stay tuned. Did you know that there is a world beyond what you can see with your physical eyes? How can you know what comes from the light versus the darkness? Alan Strudwick wants to help you discern God's truth from the dangers of false religion, false teachers, pseudoscience philosophies, and demonic influences waiting to deceive even the very elite. And now, here's your host of The Truth Project, Alan Strudwick. Hi, welcome to The Truth Project. I'm Alan Strudwick. And I'm, I'm very excited that you're watching this today and that you're staying tuned on, on these shows. There's so much on my heart to be able to expose things um, that have happened since I, you know, I, as I told you before, I left the New Age and miraculously became a believer in Jesus, which it was a miracle. But the reason I'm excited is that you're watching is because my whole job is not to ex necessarily just expose. I want to show you so that you have a victorious life. I want to show you actually who is the true Lord of this world and the authority that's been taken back when Jesus and being a believer in him and how victorious your life will be with that. So let's continue on. There are many false teachers out there. I'm not, I don't name people. I don't I need to go into that, but I am going to show you their ways. And I know these ways because I was even taught a lot of this before when we had planned to try and create that new world religion, new world order and have the strategies go into it. So I'm going to go by through them one at a time as a teaching here for you. The first false teaching that will exist out there is that there's many ways to God, that it's, there's not just one way, there's many ways. And you might think, I already know that, and, and why would that be something to me? Well, I have come across quite a lot of Christians, even Christian pastors, who are starting to think that there must be other ways. There must be other, God wouldn't just have one way. What about the dying people in India? What about the people over here? But we're told in the Bible that there is one way, and that is uh, through Jesus. And we're told that in the scripture. And I know that. I mean, I came from a background of where there were many ways and many paths, but I never got anywhere with that except for in trouble and pain and suffering and, and those types of things and deception. But when I found out who Jesus was, then all I could do with my heart was to follow him wholeheartedly. The second thing is that Jesus is not the son of God. That's the other false teaching that's being spread and will continue to be spread. That Jesus is not the son of God and he's not alive now. That the, the teaching is that in Hinduism as well, is that he's just a spiritual avatar or a spiritual teacher who's dead. There's even some people that have um, questioned me with, and I love it. I love it that even if you're watching this and you're not a believer in Jesus, please send me questions. I love it because that's my job. I, wa I don't want you to be deceived like I was. That's the interesting thing. When I was deceived, I didn't know I was deceived. I, that's why I'm doing this whole truth project to expose things so that uh, you can understand that. What they do is they actually will say that, um, <laughs> this is a funny one, that Jesus actually went and spent time in Egypt and spent not as a kid, as this is in the Bible, but as an adult, that after he was uh, resurrected, he went to Egypt and started teaching things there. This is where a lot of false doctrine and false teaching will come out of different areas in the New Age saying that Jesus was just another prophet, another avatar, and then he went and taught the Hindus and he did that type of thing. Well, that's all I'm telling you, that's all false. I know because I was in the meetings where we wanted to propagate this. Then they say that the Bible, that number three would be the Bible is not relevant, that it's a whole bunch of myths, it doesn't work today, and it's not relevant at all, and that we're more advanced, that the civilization is more advanced and more evolved and wouldn't be listening to teaching in that. The first thing I want to let you know is that when I was in the New Age, as I told you, I studied every spiritual practice. I studied so many things to become efficient, but also to become aware of all of the things that were necessary. All of them do not have any power. They don't even exist in any way of relevance to today. Man's wisdom might have some relevance, but all it'll do is give you maintenance. Most of man's wisdom and new age wisdom and personal development will just give you maintenance. But in God, everything that he has for you and every method and every practice he has in for you is for total victory. 
It's not for maintenance, it's for victory, it's for release, it's to get out of that and out of the sickness and out of the pain. I've seen too many miracles in my life because I believe when Jesus says he'll do something, he'll do that. And I've seen miracle after miracle after miracle in my own life and in other lives, in all facets of lives. And so the, the whole thing of the Bible is not relevant, that it's too old. I, w- I want to put this to you. When I became a believer, I made a decision. As I said, I studied the three years of history, but I made another decision. I made a decision that I, when I needed an answer for anything, anything in my life, anything in my businesses, anything in my ministry that I needed an answer, and I was going to go to the Word of God, to the Bible, and find out if it had an answer. Do you know that that was 30 years ago and still to today? It still gives me the answers. If you're willing to look in it, it is very relevant. Why else do you think the enemy wants you to go away from it and not read it? I have even gone into, God has opened up the doors sometimes in major organizations in this planet. And and I'll mention a couple of them, Sony and Toshiba, that they've asked me as a consultant to actually come in and find out what's wrong with it. Not from a religious point of view, but to find out what's, what's going wrong in the company, something that might be happening. And so I've gone in and I've done research and done study and I've done one-to-ones and all sorts of things to find out from the company and done analysis. And I go away and then I pray about it and I pray for God's strategies of how to fix that company. Now, I went back to one company and, and we sold, I used God's strategies and we solved over 118 issues in that company such to the point that the managing director, and I can say this openly here on record, is that the managing director, of this was Sony in Australasia, and he sat in a boardroom because of the success, other managers of other departments wanted me to come in and work with them. I had told them that I prayed. They didn't mind the, where the wisdom came from. And the interesting thing was that the managing director was Japanese. They always have a Japanese who runs the country depending on where the world, and they progress through that. He sat way up at the other end of the table and I was way down the other end and all the other managers were on the side. And the first thing that came out of his mouth was, who's your mentor? And the first thing that came out of my mind was, Jesus. I didn't mean to say it, but it just, it was in me and it came out. And there was silence in the room. In fact, it felt like all the air got sucked out of the room from all the managers that were there when I said that word. This was when I was in Australia at that time when I was living there. And you, there's not a lot of religion in Australia necessarily in the sense of in the workplace. But he looked at me and he said, I know of Jesus. And he said, my country recognizes spiritual mentors. Because of you saying that, I'm going to let you go to the rest of every one of our business departments in the company. So that opened up the door for us to not only, and I, I, the, 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 I don't even have the time to tell you what God did. He gave me so many different strategies. They weren't mine. It wasn't my wisdom. It was his wisdom from the Bible. And we implied and did them. And there was just department after department after department, had miracles, had other things happen. It was incredible what started to happen in that company. And then people started to pop up. People that are other believers would go, oh, I'm a believer, I'm a believer. Before we knew it, we had prayer meetings in the lunch times, in the cafeteria, we had other things. All because the Word of God, the Bible, was relevant and gave me answers of what to do in that company. And that's one example. I literally have hundreds. Still collating them and people want me to put them in a book. I might do that one day. But that's how relevant the Bible is. Okay, so number four is that you have become enlightened. This is the other deception, false teaching that's out there being employed by the enemy. And that is that you have to become enlightened. It's not about staying as a Christian. It's not about saying, staying just on the Bible. It's all about, if you're a believer, it's all about, because they're saying, just tell you that you have to be more enlightened. You have to have higher revelation. So these false teachers will actually talk that way. And you'll start to recognize it after me explaining this to you. They'll say things and you'll think, what, what was that? I don't think that's in the Bible. They'll talk a little bit with the Bible or a scripture and then they'll talk about something else. We do not need high revelation. We are not gods. We do not need to go from level to level to level. It's, that's the other thing that I love, by the way, of becoming a believer in Jesus, is that in the other things that I was involved in, I had to work, clearing karma, work, work, pain, pain, clear karma, clear karma. I had to put so much effort into it. I was worn out all the time. There's no peace. There's no rest. I was worked out. When I became a believer of Jesus, the interesting thing was I read a scripture that said that he's the way. 
that when I die, I go straight to heaven. So why would you, if you had a choice, this is just logic. If you were, had a choice, go through many thousands of lifetimes in the New Age, Hinduism, or one lifetime, and you're straight to heaven. I wanted to get to heaven. Even when I was in the New Age, I wanted to go to a place that was like a heaven. But I had to work through all these so-called years and lifetimes. But in, with Jesus, I don't. How simple is that logic? If you want to get, if, look, if you want to get to heaven, all you got to do is ask Jesus into your heart like I did and then ask for forgiveness and he forgives you and you're there. You, you have eternal life. I, I've never feared death because I have eternal life. I used to fear it in the new age because I used to think that I would die too soon and I wouldn't clear all the karma I needed to. So they'll, they'll try to get you to be enlightened and say that's the way forward. It's not the way forward. You just have to simply trust and be a believer in Jesus. Number four. Oh, I've just said that. Sorry. Number five, that there's no hell and that God loves everyone and everyone's going to heaven. So in that aspect of that false teaching, it's totally a doctrine from demons because we know there is a hell. The Bible talks about it. We know that God loves everyone, but that doesn't necessarily mean go to heaven. What he did is he loved us so much, he gave us an answer, and that was Jesus. He sent Jesus so that he could go to the cross and become someone who would die for us instead of us dying in our sin. And how powerful is that? But here's what the false teacher will do. They'll try to explain to you that, there's no, that a loving God would never have a hell and that a loving God would never do this and never reject you from heaven. But they, people, again, lack of knowledge. Hell was not designed for us. It was designed for, for the Satan and his fallen angels and the demons that fell. It, it wasn't for us. And so... It exists, but we have been given a choice. We've been given a way out. We've been given the love of God. So if anyone comes and says to you that there's no hell or whatever, then I'd suggest you again, go back to the truth, go back to the Bible and use that as your measuring stick. The other thing that they'll do and um, is that I want to spend a little bit of time is that they'll say there's no sin, no sin. Now, um, when I was... <laughs> <laughs> when I was in the New Age, there's certain things that are coming to my memory now um, because I didn't believe there was any sin either. I believe we, in the New Age, you can do anything you want. You can be spiritual and you can do anything you want, anything you want. In fact, when you start becoming aware that you think you're the one God and you're a God, you'll do anything and think there's no consequence. And I don't mean necessarily illegal, but it could be or immoral and it could be or even unethical. Because when you are your own self, you handle that the way that you do, thinking almost like you're God and you can create it. And then you're also told by these false teachers that the reason there's no sin, well, the other way around, the false teacher will say that there can't be sin because if there was sin, you have no way out. You have no way of, of, of fixing that. But see, that's when they, don't come, they won't come back to Jesus, that he went to the cross for our sin and for our sins. And so when they say there's no sin, they're talking about the fact that, there's a, that Christians, and I believe this as well, they believe that Christians actually put guilt on the world, okay, put guilt on the world about sin. And that sin isn't real, but it's a guilt thing. So what I'm going to do is when we come back into the next segment, I want to go a little further on a side thing of that sin. I want to go a little further into the side thing of what that really means when false teachers start to put that out. We'll be back with more of The Truth Project in just one moment. Did you know that there has been a 30-year top secret plan conceived by Far Eastern gurus? This plan has been deceptively hidden in the New Age religion to try and convert Christians and Jews in the West to embrace the false gods of Hinduism and Buddhism. Over two decades ago, Alan Strudwick was chosen as a child to be trained by leading gurus in the Hindu religion, whose mission was to infiltrate the church and convert Christians into Eastern religions. Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com, to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. In this book, Alan
Alan retells his life journey of deep entanglement with the New Age beliefs and practices that ends when he has a miraculous encounter with God the Father and Jesus. Understand how to avoid the dangers of the New Age, Hatha Yoga, Eastern Meditation, Astrology, Reincarnation, Aura Cleansing, Astral Travel, Psychic and Palm Readings, Tarot Cards, Reiki Healing, and so much more. Understand how Christians flirting with New Age practices are committing the sin of spiritual adultery. Understand that yoga is a demonic gateway opening doors for spiritual attacks. Discover how to avoid being deceived by demons that pose as angels of light. Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. Welcome back to The Truth Project. As I was just saying before in the last segment about sin. Now, why would the enemy want that as a false teaching and for false teachers to go out and say it, that there is no such thing as sin? Well, for the first thing is that think of salvation. Just think about salvation. If you're a believer in Jesus and you don't believe there's any sin anywhere and you're running around and sinning, according to the Word of God, you, when you die, then... That that's going to be an interesting thing between you and God in the sense of where will you go? Because we're told that that the sin and sinful man can actually, we can end up in, in death, but eternal death without God. So the whole idea of the new age saying there's no sin is they, they want you just to live a sinful life. That's what they want. They actually want you to live a sinful life. Now, in the first place, living a sinful life is not going to bring, it's not about guilt or shame or rules from God. It's about living a beautiful lifestyle. I know that when I rid it of sin and repented and was forgiven, my, my whole being with God rests in His love. My whole being feels the forgiveness. My whole, um, my whole lifestyle opens up more than it would from the fruits of sin because the fruits of sin don't bring life, they just bring death. So it's a very powerful thing of, of, of the enemy will constantly try to do that. Now, one of the reasons they'll also try to do the sin and that there's no sin, is that then the next step is there's no need to repent. There's no need to repent then. There's no repentance at all. So if there's no repentance in your heart in any way about you or anything else that you might have done, then you're living a life that can be full of guilt and full of pain because you, 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 you've been convinced that there's no sin, so therefore there's no need to repent. And that can start to bring confusion. And I mentioned that in one of the earlier shows. That's one of the major things that the enemy and false teachers are assigned to do is to start to bring confusion and start to bring doubt. Is it this? Is it that? Um, I, I, I've come across many people that constantly will be sending, as I said, send me things and they go, and, and all they are is full of doubt and confusion. And the reason they're full of doubt and confusion is they're double-minded. The Bible tells us that in James, that, that people are double-minded. And, and then yet they're expecting to receive the acknowledgement of the will of God, but they're not necessarily going to get that in that, in that order. And then when we bring the doubt, um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it this way. It's just a, a little trick on play on words that I do with doubt. Because, as I said, I used to try and instill doubt in people. And this is the way that they'll do it. If you break out, actually break up the word doubt, uh, by its letters, it's very simple. I believe it's driving ourselves unconscious by thinking. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with thinking, but what we can with doubt is we can start to bring ourselves almost unconscious of what's the truth and what's not because we're spending so long thinking about this or that. Should I, is sin, is the Bible right, is it not right? I, I trust Jesus. I trust the Bible. And I follow it. And I've had the results of that in my life. So it's about firsthand knowledge of being, having that experience. When, when the enemy's bringing doubt, like he did in the Garden of Eden, like he did always, he always tries to bring doubt. We, it's very hard for us to receive the promises of God if we're in doubt rather than faith, because doubt also can lead to fear. Another thing that I wanted to bring up here is I mentioned earlier in one of the shows that I would come to this, but the Course in Miracles. That first of all, that is a doctrine of demons. It, is a it was a document that a person, a New Age person, demonic person, channeled a spirit, which was a demon, it was not God, and channeled a spirit and rewrote the Bible, Higher Revelation. And in their little introduction book, that they will say that there's no such thing as sin, that sin is something we think upon and then we create the guilt and the emotion. 
But the falseness of that, so that you can understand, is that sin is an action. So if we actually sin and we do something, that action then has consequences with the people around or even ourselves on our spirit. And in those consequences, we then have to work, learn how to deal with them. And unfortunately, often when we continue to think and think and think upon them, we start creating guilt and creating shame and creating all this, because that's the first thing the enemy wants us to do, create that so that then when God comes to us or to you and you've got all this guilt and this shame, you think, I'm not worthy. And, that, and I don't have to explain much on that. It, ex it exists everywhere. In, um, in the world where people think, I'm not worthy for God. Oh, God wouldn't love me. I'm a sinful person. Even if they're not a believer in Jesus, they start saying, oh, no, he, he, they know of their sin. It's interesting. Their conscience, conscience knows what's going on in their heart. It actually knows. No, 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 God wouldn't love me because I'm sinful. Or they might not use that word. They go, because I'm full of pain or, you know, I've done bad things. So there is an awareness in people's hearts, and that's how God wants to touch it, but it comes from repentance. So people come to me sometimes and they say, did you repent? I repented, I renounced, I got delivered of all those demons, everything out of me so that I could be free with the Holy Spirit in me instead and fill my house so that I could experience the things that God wanted me to experience. Now, sometimes I'll get the, I'll get the enemy sometimes will come to me with some of these things and go, oh, yeah, but did God really say that? And oh, what about this? And oh, you're, you're not really that worthy and you're no good. Why are you even doing that? I, I have all those as well, but I know the truth over deception. So I know that those words or even those thoughts in my own head are from deception. But in fact, it's not deception. It's in fact a planned thing by the enemy to create confusion in your head and therefore then create emotions. So that, as I said, is one of the things. Now, here's another thing, and I mentioned this a bit before. The, number, uh, the next thing that the enemies and the false teachers will do is they'll try to continue the doubt, but they'll say that everybody, and I mentioned this before, everybody will be saved. Well, first of all, there's nothing logical about that, and it doesn't exist in the Bible. It doesn't exist that everybody will be saved. Um, the next thing they talk about, as I said, there's no truth in the Bible, and there's no truth in the Word of God. But it's interesting, because I, I want to sidetrack a little bit here just with one scripture. Proverbs 14, 12 says this, There is a way that seems right to man, but in its end, the way of death. But sorry, it is, its end is the way of death. Isn't that interesting? There is a way that seems right to man. So it seems right, seems right. I, I talk to a lot of different people that will say emotionally, oh, but I feel spiritual, I feel good, or I feel sad, or I feel depressed, or I feel that. It's because it's built into their feelings. There are ways that we can, in practices of God, that we can actually get rid of those feelings or we can get rid of the strongholds that came from the original thoughts. In Corinthians, it talks about how we can take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. So because of the background I came out of, the devil's constantly trying to put thoughts in my head, but I take them captive, meaning imprison them, and make them obedient to Christ. And the reason I do that is then I bring them to a scripture. I bring it to a scripture, to that thought, to prove it wrong bringing it to Christ, not to man. There is so much man's wisdom out there. I mean, I was trained to be in man's wisdom. I was trained in the new age of all the spiritual practices, but I was also trained of how to bring those spiritual practices into the normal society, into normal workday life, into normal people's lives. I was trained to bring it in normally so that the deception would never be seen, so that people would accept it, so that people would actually believe in what I was saying or in what I was doing. But that's what the scripture says. There is a way that seems right to man, but in the end, it's the way of death. We have to be very careful of what we do. And I want to break up a, another scripture here for you. This, this scripture was something that the Lord gave me. He gave me several in the beginning, but he, this one, I needed answers. I needed answers from God and said, you know, people are cheating me. You know, I'm missing things. I'm sometimes hearing the enemy. What am I supposed to do? And how do I help other people? And this is the scripture he gave me, Colossians 2.8. And it says, and it's Paul speaking, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of man and according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ or not according to the Messiah or not according to Jesus. The interesting thing, let me break this down and why it was specific for me and it will be for you as well. Beware lest anyone cheat you. So the first thing is warning 
you could get cheated. All right. There's a warning that you could get cheated, cheated from something. And I believe that's the promises of God. The promises of God are so strong. The promises of God are so real that Paul is saying, beware, warning that anyone cheats you, like takes it away from you being able to have those promises. And how? Through philosophy. Philosophy is the psyche or the soul. New Age talks about the soul, doesn't talk about the spirit. They might mention the word spirit, but what they're really talking about is the soul. When I was working under the enemy, the main focus our, our way was to try and capture people's thinking and their emotions, which is what is the soul, the thinking and the emotions. And this is saying that you could get cheated through philosophy, meaning man's wisdom, man's emotional driven things, that we could be cheated from God's things. And empty deceit. Now, what's the empty deceit? According to the traditions of man. So we're not meant to be focused on man. We'll miss the promises. But if we do according to the traditions of men, we're going to get stuck. But here's the answer. According to the basic principles of the world as well, there are principles of the world. You know, there's gravity. There's all sorts of things that are principle. Do they work? Yes. Like we use our cell phones and we use data and we use the airwaves, radio. We use all of that. There are principles of the world that work, but we are commanded and asked, don't follow the basic principles of man. Don't follow the basic principles of the world, but not that are not according to the Messiah. We need to follow the basic principles of Jesus. That's why I constantly go to the Bible. I constantly will go to the Bible to find out this, to find out because I don't want anything cheated. I do not want promises taken away from me. I don't want to be cheated from it, but this is what the false teachers do. This is what the false teachers are assigned to do. I know it because I was one of them and I was assigned to do it. I mean, even, and I'll just mention this briefly, there's even leaders in different nations right now. And I've got, I've even got newspaper articles on some of them. They're actually talking about the new religion, the new one world religion. I've seen them about the new world order, but the new world religion. And they're talking about it being an ascended, and I've got it in writing, ascended Christianity. Do you know what ascended Christianity is? Demons, doctrines of demons. It's all new age stuff. It is not the Bible. So you have to be, be aware. That's what it's saying. Be aware so you're not cheated. We don't want to follow a new world religion that is simply, you have to be an ascended. And I said that before, that's a false teaching. You're not to follow anyone that says that the Bible, you can get more than what the Bible has or that you could be ascended. There's too many teachers out there channeling a lot of stuff, which is from doctrines of demons, that is not from God. So hopefully that has helped you a little bit more. I'm going to continue in some other areas into our next week's show. But again, let me pray for you that if, if there's anything that's been coming on upon you in any way, I still will bind that spirit of fear. I will increase and speak over you now an encounter with God, an encounter with a spirit of faith and a gift of faith come upon you as well and that you will be full of the knowledge and have a hunger to get into the Word of God. Amen. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com to connect with Alan, get questions answered, and submit your prayer requests. Download the ministry app and let Alan equip you and inspire you wherever you are. Find great teaching throughout his CDs, books, eBooks you can download, and more. And be informed with timely ministry, updates, and exciting interviews. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com.